also 44 countries on uh, Wednesday signed up on the uh, continental free trade area in Kigali, Nigeria, ditched that uh, arrangement at the last uh, minute. So, uh, citing the need to consult more widely with the, uh, with the stakeholders. And yesterday, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria uh, took time to brief the media about why Nigeria... Uh, actually stayed away and why this was a good decision by President Buhari and his administration. Let's take a listen to the president of the Manufacturers Association of, Association of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Frank Jacobs. Take a listen. Let us also consider the following questions. What will be the impact of AFCFTA on the nation's tax structure, government revenue, and the welfare of over 180 million Nigerians. Two, what will be the impact of FCFTA on the political, economic, industrialization, and development framework of Nigeria? Three, what will be the fiscal and monetary implications of FCFTA on Nigeria? Four, what are the justifications for agreeing to the proposed movement of 90% of tariff lines to zero duty? Five, what would become of non-tariff charges, incentives, waivers, and exemptions currently operational in Nigeria? Six, what would be the fiscal implications of LCFTA on the income of government and regional economic communities. Seven, how will non-tariff charges vis-a-vis non-African countries be treated under the LCFTA regime? Eight, what is the agreed time frame for the gradual but progressive movement of 90% of tariff lines to zero duty? And nine, which product lines have been agreed for liberalization to be on exclusion and sensitive lists? The absence of plausible answers to these vital questions left us at man with no option than to call on the federal government to be cautious in making binding commitments on AF. CFDA. It is pertinent to mention here that man is not oblivious of the benefits inherent in installing a continental trade agreement like AFCFTA. As a continental free trade area would improve intra-African trade and enhance economic growth and sustainable development. However, we hasten to add that Nigeria's national interest should be the primary consideration in the decision to sign on to such an agreement. Here then are our recommendations to the federal government. Government should, as a matter of urgency, convene a special meeting of the relevant stakeholders, including experts, on trade policy. To one, set in motion a process that will enable all stakeholders on the international trade value chain in Nigeria to quickly review the text of the draft AFCFTA agreement and come up with comments on areas that are not in the best interest of the Nigerian economy and sectors. Two, consider all tariff line rates along the line of efficiency, sectoral and subsectoral preferences that will be most beneficial to Nigerian businesses under the AFCFTA dispensation. Three, reconsider the national position on EPA vis-a-vis -vis the AFCFTA, especially on tariff lines of products on the sensitive and exclusion list with a view to ensuring that the EU EPA is not reintroduced 
through the FCFTA's back door. Four, review all the positions of Nigeria presented by Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations to the AU Technical Working Group on CFTA so far, especially the position on the Framework Agreement establishing the FCFTA protocols on trade in goods and services, as well as the justification for the proposed progressive tariff rationalization. Five, mandate NOTN, that's the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations, to establish subcommittees of National Committee on CFTA 